Now, once you're happy with the way the spotlight is behaving, the only last thing that I am going to do is to actually control the shadows. Now, the shadow section is a new section in Nuke, and once you hit the cast shadows, you can see that we do get a pretty good shadow in the geometry, but we do have a lot low, low resolution on that shadow. You can fix that by changing the settings of the shadow. So I am still going to keep the samples on one, and I'm going to keep the sample within one, but I am going to change the resolution of the bitmap of the shadows. Instead of 1024, I'm going to change it to 6000. I have already experimented with a few values and I found that this was pretty much one of the best values to have in terms of relationship between the speed of the render and also the actual quality of the shadow. That's why I'm using this setup. Okay, so in this last section, uh, since we are uh, already with a very long tutorial, uh, I am going to basically show you a couple of the things that I've done uh, on top of uh, the comp that we've created so far. Uh, so I'll be showing you some of the extra little details that we've done to finesse the final comp. This stage of course is all up to you. Um, you can continue and continue to finesse because usually a shot like this would be a shot that in production would take a few days to to make and not just a few a couple of hours uh, but um, you can always of course uh, open the final script that comes with this tutorial there are two scripts there is the main script that starts the tutorial and there is the end script that is the complete final script you can always open it up and try to study some of the procedures because some of the details on this script or um, a little more in-depth uh, from the details from the actual tutorial. So, like we t like we said, we we worked our way from the beginning. We had a stage one, which was a prep and lens distortion, uh, where we did all the lens distortion uh, of the image. We had then a three D tracking stage, which we did all the three D tracking. We then did the stage three with all the modeling of the room. Uh, and this was a very important section because it helped us uh, to reuse some of this geometry uh, for other stages. Uh, we then did, we started putting some new textures, always using the models that we've done before. So we brought in some broken glass uh, and we always use this mainstream uh, technique. So we always had the mainstream of all the comp and then we just kept piping in every new layer. So in here we had the broken glass, then here we had some extra dirt that I put in. We haven't done this section in the in the, the tutorial, but uh, you can always, of course, go ahead and have a look at what happened here. Uh, if you look closely to the wall here, uh, basically what I've done here is I've made some extra dirt pass on the walls so that the room looks a little more dirty. Uh, this all comes with a PSD called dirt.psd. You can have a look at what kind of files you can output from there and also experiment a little with, with, with it. Uh, later on we did uh, a lot of uh, blood. We, we had several layers of blood, so I've divided the whole thing and basically comped some blood in the wall, some blood in the two uh, parts of blood in the table one in the chair and um, of course we also had the plaster hole in the wall uh, so we've done that as well uh, as a separate as an extra uh, section of the tutorial if you want to have a look there is also this little bonus here this bonus is basically a technique to take away uh, the, the, the sockets from the wall since I wanted this uh, scene to have a little more uh, survival horror look and maybe a little older, I, w I didn't really want to have these sockets. Now, the way I went into cleaning these sockets up was to basically use the same geometry of the wall and I am projecting in 3D uh, the piece of geometry. I'm just going to bring in the scene here. And basically projecting into the walls um, the socket as you can see so you can see if I scrub through the footage 
you can see that I'm projecting the entire footage into this uh, 3D car. I then, in my scan land render, um, I change the output of the projection. It used to be a perspective output. I change it to UV. Now, when I change it to UV, what I get is this. I get a UV texture of that uh, wall. And if I play it, just gonna play it here. You can see that what's happening, since I'm projecting the output from the camera to a 3D card, I get basically almost like I've done a stabilization in the sockets. So this procedure is similar to do to doing a 2D stabilizing node um, to stabilize a plate and then paint on top. So that's what I did. I basically uh, did a UV project, I've stabilized it, and now of course since it's much more stable, I can now uh, basically roto and paint on top of it. Uh, and and this was the result, it was basically a patch that I got from that section. Once I have the patch, I then pipe it into the same card. This card over here is the same card as the one from the projection. And then I reproject just that section, as you can see. You, you probably don't see it very well, but there it is, that's the little uh, patch. So now the patch is going to move with the camera. So if, I'm, if I bring this to 3D, I'm just going to stop there. You can see that now the patch is correctly uh, playing in the 3D scene. And then of course, after I did all of those things, I basically just merged. So I had this footage, these were the energy sockets. With that projection setup, I just basically patched it on top. Once I did the patch, now we're all ready to go. So there we go. Now we don't have the energy sockets anymore. Now, <clears throat> after this, after the dirt, after the blood, after the patch, uh, just like I did on the tutorial, uh, I basically went in and I projected the entire room for a relighting purpose. Now, we use the lighting inside Nuke in the shadow setup to actually make a completely new environment for the for the room. After I did this, uh, in all the scanline renders, the scanline render nodes, in the multi sample tab, you can always bring the samples up. So you want to get rid of if you want to get rid of some of the uh, edges uh, because of the anti lazing. So for example, if I zoom in very close to the to the photo frame, for example or even to the chair and I'm gonna put the samples to default which is to zero you can see that this is usually the default quality you get from the 3d system of nuke because there is no anti-lazing whatsoever so as you can see I, I get the chair uh, with a lot of problems on the edges now if I move my samples and I, I found that five was a good number for this uh, exercise What's happening is that the image is getting sampled five times, and of course, you're having a much smoother edge. This is also a way of doing motion blur, but uh, for the motion blur, I actually used another process because I wanted the, the motion blur to be a little faster. So you can also open my script and just have a look at how I developed this, but I basically brought in a motion blur 3D. I'm, of course, assuming uh, prior knowledge of Nuke before this tutorial, so um, this is not a beginner's tutorial. So I'm assuming that you know how this works, but if you don't, at least you can always open the script and have a look. But this is basically creating the motion uh, vectors, and then those motion vectors are being used by the vector blur. I'm also applying the shadow, uh, <clears throat> not directly into the scan line uh, through the shadows being on here. So you have cast shadows over here. I actually turned this off because I brought in the shadows as a separate pass, as a separate layer, because it gives me a lot of more control. And for those, for that part, I actually used uh, this one. This grade uh, one here is the grade that is controlling the shadow. So as you can see, 
I have 0, 4 on the multiply, but if I bring it all the way up to 0, there is hardly any shadow. If I bring it, sorry, if I bring it all the way to, to complete multiplication, then it's all black. So this way I can control the amount of shadow that I want to have in my scene. Uh, I find that this is a much better use. And this is very basic, I'm, I'm just using the shadow mask uh, as the mask of this grade node. Uh, and then you have this total control. This also allows you to actually, if you want, colorize the shadows because sometimes you have a hint of tint into the shadow. So if I wanted, I could now, if I wanted, just bring in, for example, some red into the shadows or if I wanted, I can bring some blue into the shadow. So I, I mean, I it gives me a lot more control than to just use the shadows directly from the scanline render. There's also, of course, other things here. We have a Z-Blur to do a little Z-Depth, and the Z-Depth actually is coming from the actual Z-Depth that the 3D system itself in Nuke creates. Because the 3D system in Nuke will create a Z-Depth, uh, so I'm basically just using that one uh, to use on the Z-Blur. I then have, of course, the redistortion of the plate, uh, and this is done by the Lens Distortion tool. The redistortion of the plate happens by unticking the undistort. So the first lens distortion that we had had the undistort button on. Now, if I uncheck this button, I get the reverse of the first distortion that we had. So that's what you're after. Uh, and then I have a couple of final tweaks. I have a vignette. I have a little sharpness. I have some grade nodes, uh, some saturation. I have a little glare that affects the photo here. I have a chromatic aberration uh, node. Uh, this node uh, comes from um, from uh, Nukipedia, uh, so it's very easy for you to install. But it is converted to a group, so you don't have to install it. And at the very end, I have some grain uh, applied to the whole clip. One thing I did forget to mention was that I've also applied a flashlight texture into the scene. And that section is actually done here on the light beans mask, and it's all coming from this read note. So I've 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 got some a photo of some flashlight textures. I've tweaked the saturation of them. Uh, I then uh, roto and basically merged them in a way that I wanted. Uh, I then graded them so I would have the basic layout of a flashlight. So you have like always this middle section of light and always a little circle of light in the on the outer rim of the of the flashlight i then project the entire uh, texture into the entire room this room here is an fbx export of all the geometry that we've done um on the modeling st stage i then get this i get basically uh, a 3d room with this flashlight texture I then, of course, tweaked it with grade, I defocus it a little, and then I, I basically just merge it on top of my scene. So this was my scene with just the normal light, and then I merge that on top to have this flashlight effect. And after I have that flashlight effect, then I have the Z-Depth, I then have uh, the shadows as well, so they are a little more intensified. I also have a little edge blur as well to tweak the photo frame. I have the read distortion of the plate. So now the plate is behaving like it used to be. I then have a little vignette. I have some grading, some glare, so chromatic aberration, and some grain, and voila, then you get the final clip. Um, yeah, so feel free to experiment and to have a look at the entire script if you have any questions, you can always um, you can always uh, email us. Uh, and um, once again, I would like to thank uh, Ron Gambar for giving us this clip to use. Make sure that you visit his website, just like on the address that I have on the screen now. Uh, it's rongambar.wordpress.com. So please visit his website. He was very kind in giving us this piece of footage for us to use on this tutorial.